I'm a huge fan of the original Star Tropics. I've been playing it since I was a young child. Throughout my life, I've played that game at least a dozen times from start to finish. I always thought it was sad that it never got a sequel. Well, fast forward many years later, and in my early 20s, I was surprised to see that Star Tropics did get a sequel. The title of that sequel is Zoda's Revenge, Star Tropics 2. Yeah, Star Tropics 2 is the subtitle. Now, I'm sure there is a reason for this, but I just can't help but think that that was a stupid choice. When I was a broke teenager, I actually remember browsing ROM lists and seeing Zoda's Revenge, but I never did check it out. Had it said Star Tropics 2, I would have loaded up that ROM immediately. In my ignorant opinion, the game ought to have been titled Star Tropics 2, with Zoda's Revenge being the subtitle. Anyway, Star Tropics 2 was developed by Nintendo R&D 3 and published by Nintendo for the NES in March of 1994. The story picks up where the first game left off. You play as Mike Jones. During the opening cutscene, it's revealed that Mike and his uncle, Dr. Jones, live in Seattle. Dr. Jones is trying to decipher a puzzle. An Argonian princess named Micah contacts Mike telepathically to help him solve the problem. Once they read out loud the cipher, Mike Jones is whisked away and the game begins. In a nutshell, the main objective to your journey is to recover all of the Tetrads, which I'm sure you can tell are Tetris pieces. Star Tropics 2 is much the same as its predecessor, but also looks to improve on many of the original game's flaws. One of the criticisms of the first Star Tropics was that because the majority of the game took place in the tropics, each area and dungeon were too similar, thus leading some players to feel bored of the adventure. While I don't don't have this problem with the original Star Tropics, I can understand why other players would. To fix this issue, the story of Star Tropics 2 now focuses on time travel. For each chapter of the game, Mike is sent to a different time period, each of which has its own theme which allows for different locations, characters, and enemies. Because the story is centered around time travel, you'll never know where the next chapter will take you. And on that note, I'll try not to spoil too much of the adventure. The story is light-hearted and even sometimes quite goofy. Even even more so than the original. For example, when you meet Cleopatra in Egypt, her biggest concern is that the pizza she ordered hasn't arrived yet. So she sends you, someone she's never met before, to get her pizza, a food that did not exist back then. Shortly after you set off, you'll find the delivery man, and he just so happens to be riding a red Koopa Troopa. Alright, so we have a Tetris and a Super Mario Brothers reference. There are other references as well, but I'll leave that for you to discover. But I think that's really neat. Anyway, he gives you the pizza for you to bring back to Cleopatra. Once the pizza has been delivered, she's happy to help you find the Tetrad. There are also many interactions that seem irrelevant and or inconsequential. For example, later on in the game while you're in London, the police arrest you because you're standing outside. Yeah, I mean you're not committing any crimes. They've just arbitrarily decided that you look suspicious, so they lock you up in a cell that just so happens to have an easy to find escape route and you can just walk out. Like why is this a thing? Basically, for each chapter, you just have to help the people with their simple problem to get the tetrad, then move on. Overall, the story is as thin as toilet paper, but a nice trade-off is that at least you don't get bogged down by too much text. Alright, let's take a look at the difficulty and controls. In my opinion, Star Tropics 2 gets off to a bit of an uneven start. Alright, so the very first challenge is making your way through this snowy field. Sounds simple, right? But there are many pitfalls that you cannot see coming. If you fall, you'll have to fight your way back out. It's not hard, but it seems a bit strange that this is your first obstacle. In the first major dungeon, about halfway through, there's a maze where you have to continue to select the correct door. If, at any point, you select the wrong door, you get sent back out of the dungeon and you have to restart from the beginning. It turns out, this pattern on the wall inside the first town is the order in which you pick the doors. But on your first playthrough, how would you know that? Again, it just seems like another odd choice for the very first area of the game. As for the controls, they're made a lot more fluid. You're able to move in all eight directions and it feels pretty good. However, this fluidity comes at a cost. Because you're no longer locked into a grid, it's now much easier to miss your jumps. Therefore, the platforming in Star Tropics 2 is a lot more challenging. Also, you don't have any iframes, so even a small enemy can drain your health in 
seconds. And on top of that, Mike generally takes a lot of damage. It seems like the majority of enemies later in the game will take two or three hearts off your health each time they hit you, so it's very easy to die. And each time you die, you lose everything. Any extra items like potions or invincibility stars are gone, as well as extra weapons. They all get removed every time you die. When you respawn, you start with only five hearts. At least you get to start at the most recent checkpoint. However, if you game over, you lose everything and go back to the beginning of the dungeon. Some dungeons don't even have checkpoints, so a regular death has the same punishment as a game over. To sum it up, you can die very easily and the punishment for death can be quite costly, depending on where you are in the game. Ultimately, Star Tropics 2 can be a very frustrating game. Although, as frustrating as it may be, Star Tropics 2 is still a great time. The dungeons are fun to navigate and many of the boss fights are a highlight. Several of these bosses incorporate other elements to provide a unique encounter. There's a boss where you constantly need to hop around on platforms that disappear after a short time. It's not easy, but I thought it was pretty fun. There's also the fight against the night where you're on a circular, fast-moving track. I'll leave it at that just because I don't want to spoil anything further, but trust me, the boss fights in this game are quite fun. Also, each time period in town is fun to explore. Star Tropics 2 is a linear game, but there are missable items like large heart containers, so make sure to look everywhere. The sound and the music are also pretty well done. I don't like the music as much as I like the music in the original Star Tropics, but it is still good. <laughs> However, one thing that drove me crazy is the low life alarm. Check it out. So that's about all I have to say about Star Tropics 2. I like it a lot, and if you liked the first Star Tropics, there's a good chance that you'll also like Star Tropics 2. I don't like it as much as the first game, but that's just me. I do find it a little bit more frustrating, and I don't like the music quite as much. That being said, I give Star Tropics 2 a 7 out of 10. Thank you guys so much for watching. Let me know down in the comments what your opinion of Star Tropics 2 is, and I'll see you in the next video.